I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. And this is part two of our three-part Misha episode. Buckle up. And that's, yeah. So all that to say, here are my issues with Misha. <laughs> we should probably, so yeah, and then. I mean, not that anyone who isn't already listening to this podcast doesn't understand the connection, right, between Misha and the community. But Mm -hmm. that should probably be like a little bit of a precursor to about why this is happening, like why this is occurring. Yeah. So that's my that's my journey. That's me. Hi, Carly. I'm queer. So in it. In order to avoid explaining that whole rigmarole that I just told you guys to everybody else, I just, I identify as queer. That's fine. If you push me or we're in a conversation that merits it, I will say to you that I'm pansexual. I will say to you that I'm non-binary. If we're close, I will go into the non-binary in more detail. The pansexual doesn't need more detail. I feel like everybody knows what that is now. But, you know. It's like layers. It depends how close we are. Mm-hmm. We're on a general date day. I'm just like, I am I'm, I'm queer. That's just, I don't really know how else to describe myself. Mm-hmm. There's no, because it would be complicated. I would have to be like, and I'm this, and I'm this, and I'm this. Just describe myself as queer. Mm-hmm. Amisha has long been, because of the whole Destiel thing, and you, we're not, we're not going to bash Destiel. That's not what we're about. We've talked about SDL, Sandra. It's not our ship, but we're not going to bash it. We don't have any problems with it, you know? Mm-hmm. But a lot of people saw Cass as um, gay, bi, for a long time before the ending. And then, of course, we had the ending and everything dialed up to 11. I'm sorry if you like me. If you haven't caught on by now... This is probably not the episode for you either. So I'm just going to throw that out there. If all that didn't clue you into this is not a Misha positive episode, it ain't. And if you want to click out now, no hard feelings. We'll see you next time. And was like, it was a homosexual declaration of love. And then everyone spent two fucking years asking Jensen if he loved Cass back. And then when Jensen went, not in that way, everyone went, I did better. As I'm not in for that part of the fandom neither. Destiel is fine, but you have to be aware that it is just a ship in a show. It's not it's not canonical. It's not real. Okay. It's just not. So that's where my stand is. Okay. You can ship it. It's fine. But one of the actors said they didn't agree with it. So you cannot call it canon. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I well, I mean, Dean didn't really say anything. I suppose you could make an argument for canon. <laughs> Dean hasn't said anything. It's a weird, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because Dean yeah. didn't say anything, but then Jensen said no. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we're big proponents of consent here, and I feel like that's Jensen not giving his consent on saying that Dean also homosexually attracted to mm-hmm. Castiel. Mm-hmm. But that's beside the point. Castiel as a character, because of Misha, and there's nothing wrong with this, became this like LGBTQ beacon. A lot of people gravitated towards Cast. I'm going to put my hand up and say, I don't see what they were saying. I've watched the show. I didn't. I know there's the whole profound bond thing. But I just don't, I don't, I don't see it, you know? Mm -hmm. I think if you were going to squint at any relationship in that show, it would probably be between Dean, Dean and Sam. Um, You know, and even that, you'd have to squint pretty hard at it. 
I you think know? it all and all like unless it's significantly legislated and out there, I think there's squinting going on in a lot of these chips. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I just think that's and that's the thing. That's what makes um, fandom and uh, headcanon so rich, right? Because you can color outside of the lines and take mm-hmm. two characters and do what you want with them if you so choose in even just your headspace it doesn't have to be putting even things down on words but like what if or hmm what does that mean or i'm noticing that little line or here's this here's that um mm-hmm. i will say that i think just from my subsequent views of the show i think they I think they did do a lot of playing with uh, Cass and Dean's relationship a lot and really mm. putting them in roles that I think lean towards Destiel being, okay, you know, if I squint, I definitely see this or it's the, mm. you know, like that kind of stuff. Um, but the same could yeah. be said for Sam and Dean canonically, you know, early on. Um, but again, like, yeah. you know, soulmates has a lot of different connotations in it too. Like, what does that mean? Like, does that necessarily mean it's a sexual thing or is it just a, we're bonded together kind of situation? So yeah, there's yeah. a lot of different ways you can look at, at the characters and shipping um, in and of itself. But yes, I believe that the, I think the writers and the producers didn't know what they were doing either. And kind of were just like playing around with different things, playing with pieces, playing with characters. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of the same way that, you know, Chuck was, right? Mm -hmm. And what what happens if we put this person with this person? What happens if we stick these people in this room together and have have them have this discussion? So, yeah, again, that just, the whole show itself lends very easily to what ifs scenarios. Oh, yeah. 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 100%. And I will, I will side with anybody that says, Cass was done fucking dirty at the end of season 15. Mm -hmm. He really was. Mm -hmm. For them to throw that out there, and it it was so, even before Misha said a word, it was so, so raw, so so emotional. It was so beautiful. Beautiful. I was honestly blown away by Misha's acting. It was incredible. And for them to have Dean just stand there and say, nothing and then i mean we we've talked about this endlessly in our group chats and things like that it's not mentioned again yeah dean doesn't i feel like that would warrant a conversation be like Mm -hmm. hey sam did you know Mm -hmm. cal said this Mm -hmm. and it was it was cruel yeah and they did they did him dirty and Mm -hmm. people have accused supernatural of burying their gaze for a long time and they do, mm-hmm. and that was just another, another example of that. And it was, you know, it was bad. It was, it was, the speech itself was a great end to Cass's character arc. Mm-hmm. You know, for mm-hmm. him to get to say all of the things that he he wanted to say, he needed to say to Dean. Mm-hmm. Fine, that was that was lovely. But he he should have got something back. If that was going to be his end, he should have got something back. I've always said that that was a situation where it needs another it needs another part to it. Because at the end, at at that point, like I'm sorry, no matter what, if you're talking about Dean the character, he's never very vocal. He's never very like I'm just going to pour my heart out right then and there. That would have been another conversation he should have had with Cass whatever that looked like at the other side of it, there should have been another conversation, but it was not going to happen then. I think it was too much. I think it was too much for, for Dean at that point, like feeling Mm -hmm. like I kind of connect with him and understand him. There's no way he would have been, even if he felt something, I don't think it would have come out right then and there. I just don't. Um, So I know I agree with you. I think that the, that like that, that initial connection, that initial conversation just merited another part that we never got. Um, and even mm-hmm. if it had to be worked out with talking about it with Sam, you know, having that discussion, somebody that he's 
very close to, you know, that kind of sees everything anyway and would be able to pull more things out of Dean to get him ready for that conversation. Never yeah. happened. So Supernatural didn't, Supernatural gave gave the community something they've been wanting, but then misused it horribly and treated yeah. treated them in a way that just gutted them after this utter elation. Um I mm-hmm. feel, and I know hearing it, but um, I could imagine, you know, just being in in there and then having that euphoria, which I've told you too, like I was feeling that for the community. Like when it started, mm. when he started talking, like I just remember I was with, I was with Ted on the, on the couch. I was like, oh my God, they're going to do this. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's going to happen. Like this is, this is, this is Destiel. Like, in in the flesh occurring like truly and when it happened i was so i was so happy for cass and i was happy for dean hearing that from for you know like cass's feelings for him um but yeah mm. oh total tangent let's get back <laughs> Sorry. yeah no Sorry. no no it's it's fine i i remember watching it with my husband and being like i think that was romantic you know and he was like nah but he's very it's very black and white with these things. Yeah. But he, yeah. he didn't see it. And I was like, no, I think I think it I think it was. You put that I, in any romance, anything at the end of a romantic comedy, a romance whatever, where one character expresses their love for someone else, that play by play yeah. is a romance. It's a it's a romantic. It scene. is. It, it is. is. And you like know? you like you said, the the producers mishandled it so badly Mm -hmm. so badly Mm -hmm. and i get i get why everyone was mad i do a lot of people saw a lot of themselves in Cass, in Mm -hmm. dean in their relationship i don't go into tv shows looking for that kind of uh, it's it's validation but i don't mean it in like a in like a negative way um, but I don't go looking for that affirmation, that validation, and I'll, I'll get into why okay. I don't look for that a, a little bit, a little bit later. Mm-hmm. But I don't. So I wasn't. I was mad because I was like, "You can't. Why would you do that? That's just, you already killed Charlie, and she was the only openly LGBTQ plus person that you'd had, and mm-hmm. you murdered her senselessly for no reason. Mm-hmm. And then you've done it again now. Mm-hmm. You know." And I I was mad about it, but I wasn't, like, gutted Mm -hmm. in the same way the community seemed to be. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, so Misha Misha leaned into it, didn't he? Misha was like, it was a homosexual declaration of love. Castiel romantically loved Dean. Okay, that's your headcanon, Cass. Whatever, you talked to Jensen, you talked to the producers, you did whatever. That is the conclusion that you have reached. That's fine. And he leaned into it, and Cass became this kind of, just this kind of beacon of of the LGBTQ plus community in this show that is so ruthless and, frankly, quite misogynistic as well. Mm-hmm. It's not a great show by 2022 standards mm-hmm. in terms of being, you know, politically correct and um, all those good things. All all the stuff that we we want now, it was it was two thousand and five. A lot of it didn't exist back then, or if it did, it was very quiet. So mm-hmm. we won't we won't judge the show, but it was just yeah. I've forgotten where I was going with that. But anyway, so Misha Misha leans into this. He disc- I remember him being asked what he thought Castiel's wings would look like and him being like, oh, they're rainbow wings. He leaned hard into that. And that was fine. It was good to see somebody trying to make a not a role model, but trying to give somebody a character that they could identify with. Almost because, like representation. In yeah. A way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a lot of a lot of the community will know, we very rarely get that kind of representation. If we do, 
were there for comedic value or were there as a diversity quota, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. With very rarely a queer people allowed to be in shows and be queer and it just be fine. Mm-hmm. You know? It the Winchesters be, Yeah. Yeah, the <clears throat> Winchesters did it great. The like first episode um talking with Carlos oh weren't you hooking up with Mary's boyfriend and you were with insert girl character who can't remember mm-hmm. and it was fine like nobody batted an eyelid that's really mm-hmm. good yeah. Carlos is bisexual it never comes up again it's not it's not his character is not centered around being bisexual it's just a facet of his character mm-hmm. but then it's not fetishized either mm-hmm. and that's kind of usually what we get in mainstream media so that's fine and that brings us on to event the first, which I have christened Bygate because I'm terrible at naming things. So what happened was we're at New Jersey Con. Sandra was actually at New Jersey Con and you heard this pretty much from the horse's mouth. I but, did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what had happened was Misha was doing a, a breakfast. Was it a breakfast, a dinner? It was a, it was a dinner. It was a dinner. A dinner. Okay. And he comes out and he's at the little podium doodad. I forget what they call it. The little lecture. Podium. Yeah, podium. Mm-hmm. Podium. Yeah. And he's just engaging with the crowd. And he goes, So, who's an introvert? People cheer. Who's an extrovert? People cheer. And who's bisexual? A lot of people cheer. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop there. That's it's inherently wrong to do that because it makes bisexual people and when I when I say bisexual, I'm including um people who identify as bisexual, people who identify as pansexual like me, people who identify as polysexual. If you feel like your identity comes under the bisexual umbrella in some form or another, I'm talking to you, okay? We are the butt of every joke, it feels like. We are not very welcome in our in the queer community, in the LGBTQ plus community, and we're not welcome in the heterosexual community either um this is of course not the experience of every bisexual person but i will tell you it is my experience we are to be to be crude about it we're too gay for the straights and we're too straight for the gays so we don't we're not welcomed in either space if you are hanging out with a bunch of your friends who are straight and you say you're bisexual and those friends maybe you're really lucky maybe you've got great friends but maybe you're unlucky and maybe you get friends that go oh god you're not gonna hit on me are you or some variation Mm. therein of oh well you must find me attractive no i have eyes no (laughs) you know and that sounds cruel but that's genuinely like what for whatever it is people think if you say if you say you're bisexual or some you know somewhere under that umbrella that you just want to fuck everybody. That you mm-hmm. don't have any any sexual preferences at all. You don't have any standards. You just want to fuck everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, there's rumors, myths, whatever you want to call it. Bisexual people are more likely to cheat because we're attracted to um, more know, people. <laughs> more people. Yeah, basically. Yeah, we're we're more likely to cheat. You know, we're God. less trustworthy. <laughs> Jesus. In the eyes, I mean, mm. we're that being more likely to cheat, being more trustworthy. That seems to be unanimous across the two mm. groups. And I don't want to make it like a two group thing. You know, there's like straight people and the community. I don't want to make it that way. But I'm going to be honest with y'all. Y'all have fucking made it that way. You told us we don't fit in in either of those places and you made it a two-place thing. So that's the kind of reaction that you get from straight people, which is, oh, you God, you know, 
disgust, revulsion, homophobia. You're not going to hit on me, are you? Da, 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 mm. Things like that. Mm-hmm. Or you get, oh, well, you must find me attractive because you're a whore. That's kind of the reaction you get mm. from the, um, the, the straight community. You know, and the usual as well, the very typical homophobic things that I think most of us get from the straight community. You just need a good insert genitals here that'll sort you out whatever it is so i'm bisexual i'm talking to a man for example you just need a good dick that'll make you straight won't and certainly not yours mate no Mm. ick gross that's not just by people i'm sure there are many 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 any sexualities out there that could comment on this and go, yeah, I've heard that before. It's very common. It seems to be very common towards lesbian lesbians. They seem to get that a lot. Oh, you just need a good dick. Nope. I fucking don't. And it wouldn't be yours anyway, pal. No. But we are all that from the straight community. So we go, okay, fuck those guys. I'm going to go over to the gay community. LGBTQ plus community. And then you go, well, say I'm talking to a a lesbian, any lesbian, a faceless lesbian. I'm not picking on anybody. And I go, I'm bisexual. And they go, well, you fuck men. So you must be straight. They're like, but no, no, no. I I like both. Mm, Well, no, you fuck men. You must be straight or the alternative. Oh, you fuck women. You must be, you must be, yeah, you must be a lesbian then. No. No. Just no. Mm. You know? And the the kind of again, this is my lived experience. I'm not talking for everybody. I'm not talking for everyone under the bisexual umbrella. I'm not talking for everybody in the community. This is my lived experience. I get from the community. Pick a side. Mm -hmm. That's what I get. And again, there's also that inherent, we're more likely to cheat. We're inherently less trustworthy. We're whores, you know, because we're attracted to more people. So we must obviously be unable to control ourselves. We're going to go fuck everybody because we can. Okay, well, you can fuck everybody. You choose not to. We also choose not to. Yeah, but so I that's... know plenty of straight men who fuck every every female that they can. That makes them, and that's great, isn't well... it? Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> and Apparently, that's, fine. that's okay. And, and nobody's yeah. telling them that they're more likely to cheat or that they're not trustworthy. No, they just, are <laughs> just because they fuck everybody. Because they yeah. fuck everybody of one gender. Yeah, it's fine. Mm. So that's again my lived experience from the community. Mm. You just need to pick a side. You just need to pick a side. You're either straight or you're gay. You cannot be in the middle. You're either, you haven't found the right person of your own gender or you haven't found the right person of the opposite gender. And when you do, you'll pick a side. Which leads me nicely to my next point. It's a phase. Straight community. It's a phase. You'll find a nice insert opposite gender. This tends to come from family. You'll find a nice man and settle down. You'll find a nice girl and settle down. It's a phase. Hate that with every inch of my soul. Mm. Hate it. Mm -hmm. What I hate more, though, is you're just greedy. You need to pick someone. I hear that more than I would like. Mm. I'm just greedy. I just need to pick someone. No, I'm not. Stop it. And it's all just minimalizing, erasing Mm -hmm. someone who identifies that way. It erases their lived experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not greedy. It's not a phase. (laughs) I would, if it's a phase, it's been a fucking long one. You know? Plus, doesn't that, that inherently means that someone who, um, identifies as bisexual is necessarily having sex with lots of people because you can you can be a certain sexuality and not not be Mm -hmm. hitting every like like i mean 
I could tell you that, you know, knowing I'm straight doesn't mean, <laughs> you know, I'm having a ton of sex. Like, you know, like, so it's, 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 it's that judgment. Yeah. Which is, yeah. 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 It's yeah. all, it all comes down to just an, which again, it's a, fine. Like if you want to have as much sex as you want to have, go, you, you go know, live your life. It. Yeah. But there's that, there's that, the assumption that because I'm this, it means this and everybody's life is lived differently and experienced differently. And you could, I would think someone could be bisexual and never have sex with a certain individual. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there could be that. So why, why yeah. expect that from, yeah, that doesn't make, that's just very doesn't stupid. Makes sense. <laughs> Does it? It's dumb. Mm -hmm. It's dumb. And so can that, I just say like, before you even yeah. get back into it, just those three questions in general that Misha asked, the bisexual part is a total non sequitur. It has nothing to do with the introvert and extrovert. So I'm wondering too, like introvert, extrovert are character traits. Bisexual mm -hmm. is something totally different. So just that immediately, like hearing that just immediately, like it, it felt, it felt off to me, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no, I'm going to touch on that. Don't worry. I got notes. <laughs> Y'all people, you should be so impressed. I should have said this right at the top of the episode. I have like a whole fucking page <laughs> of notes as bullet points and everything i came prepared for this <laughs> because it's it's serious not that the podcast the podcast eh, do we consider ourselves a serious podcast i never have i think we can at times but i don't think i think we lean into serious on occasion but i don't think it's mm. i don't think it's full on this is yeah this is definitely one of i think our more serious serious yeah. episodes yeah mm -hmm. and it's like I know I joke about being unprepared, but I do like usually prepare like a little bit. I have yeah. things yeah. that I can call on while we're talking, mm -hmm. but this was like, I needed to get all my ducks in a row because I needed to know what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. So you actually bringing that up brings me around to sort of like, yeah, it's not the same, is it? Are you an mm -hmm. introvert or an extrovert? But are you bisexual? Which implies that it's, as you say, a character trait and not an inherent part of who you are. Mm -hmm. Now, my, you don't say things like that if you're not already thinking them. And I'm not saying that Misha is truly homophobic because I genuinely don't think he is. What I am saying is he's ignorant because unless you are part of the you know unless you are bisexual or again pan poly what uh, polysexual whatever if you fall under our umbrella you don't know what it means to live that experience so it's ignorant it's not inherently homo uh, homophobic sorry it's ignorant he but for him to just say that out loud and there was no pause it was like a dit, 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 like a real call and response with the audience he's thinking it Maybe he's making jokes about it with his friends, you know? He sees bisexual people as less than. And I know that some of you are listening and going, okay, now they're reaching for that, but am I? Am I really reaching for that? A few years ago, there was um, a YouTuber, streamer, PewDiePie, Felix, somebody or other his name is, and he said the N-word on, on stream. Very loudly, right? And everybody went mental. Reasonably fucking so. And the consensus there was, it's a word that's so ingrained in us to be wrong that for you to say it out loud with that much ease means you're saying it in private. He knew he was on stream. It wasn't like the stream was just accidentally on. You know, someone caught him at a bad moment, whatever. He knew he was on stream and he still said it. He was comfortable saying it and using it as an insult which means he's using it off camera it's in his repertoire of words that he uses in the same way that i would call somebody a twat or an idiot or whatever it's in his repertoire of insults that's how we've used that word this is very much the same thing for me you don't make jokes about people unless you're comfortable Misha would never have come out and said, who's extroverted, who's introverted, 
Who was gay? Who was trans? You would never have said it. Because those identities... I don't want to... They're not protected, per se. Mm -mm. But they are more respected. You know? If someone says, admittedly, homophobes, try. You know, if you are a gay woman, a lesbian... You will undoubtedly have heard, oh, you just need the right dick. You just need a good dick. That'll sort you out inherently. And I'm sure gay men hear exactly the same. Oh, you just need a good woman. Whatever. Don't hang around with homophobic people. I don't know what kinds of things they say. But I know that they say this. But if you're gay, people tend to just go, okay. And that's that's just it. That's just accepted. You pref- You have a preference for your own gender. And people, hopefully, mostly, go, yeah, right. And that's fine. Trans is a bit trickier because I know that I know that people who are trans do not live the experience of going, I'm, insert gender here, and people going, oh, okay. Mm. But as the trans rights movement is gaining more traction, people are, well, I mean, there's the wizard lady, wizard Karen, and all her fuckwits over there. But it's cool. People, I feel, are trying to be more accepting, more understanding, more supportive. I feel like you it's wouldn't... just learning to be more politically correct is kind of where yeah. that's the that's where that's happening, I think. Um maybe. Yeah. yeah. People people are trying, you know, and certainly in this day and age of social media and every single thing you say, someone has the record of it. Mm -hmm. everything no self-respecting celebrity would be caught fucking dead asking a question like that are you gay who's gay who's trans because their career would be over that would that would be it you know they would be and rightly fucking so torn to shreds but misha's career isn't over nothing happened nothing happened so he asks his questions and he's trying to move on. He's made his little ha ha aren't bisexual people funny joke and he's ready to move on. And someone in the crowd shouts out to him, What about you? Or what are you? Something like that. And Misha and goes, Me, I'm all three, and moves on and just leaves it there. I have video of this. Of people going, you could hear people in the background of this video going, did he just say he was bi? Did he just come out? Like, people took it really seriously. Mm -hmm. Sandra was at ground zero. She wasn't at the dinner, but you were speaking to the person who recorded the original video. I'd heard it. Yeah, I'd heard it in a group that I was with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't say I was talking to the person in particular, but I was in a group and heard it being stated, the fallout. I think it was the day after and how it had like spread like wildfire. all over the internet. Yeah. 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 And I think I think this had happened on the Friday night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This, so this was the Friday night that he said that. It was mm-hmm. dinner, whatever. And then for the rest of the con, Misha didn't say anything. The community went fucking insane because holy shit, that's a big deal. A lot of people look to Castiel as representation and for Castiel's actor to come out as bisexual that's an incredible deal you know I think did we know he'd split over from his wife then had he split over from his wife oh yeah 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 mm-hmm. so we were like oh my god you know is 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 that it is he is he coming out because now he's now he's split up from his wife you know and of course there are all the theories that go around about like Misha and Jensen and you know J2 and things like that and people People do have head cannons about that. And mm-hmm. it's fine as long as you stay respectful. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna judge. As long as you don't walk up to Jensen or Misha and say something horrific right to their face, you can imagine they get up to whatever the fuck you want to imagine they get up to. It's fine. You know? Mm-hmm. So this happens on the Friday. We have all day Saturday. We have all day Sunday. We have until Monday. 
And Sunday was, and again, this was the, this was the convention where Jared had gotten hurt, right? And wasn't there. So Uh as part of the panel Sunday, where it's usually Jensen and Jared, it was Jensen and Misha. And they'd had um, what I thought was actually like a really good discussion. Like it wasn't an out and out, like, you know, Destiel's canon, but it was a discussion about like the final scene together. And it was like more input, like on Jensen's end about how beautiful a scene it was and seeing the character and saying goodbye to the character as well as Misha and all of these things that they got to kind of talk about. So in my mind, it was a very, it seemed like it was such a great positive thing for the community to like, to get to have all of those things, you know, cause they always talk about, Oh, you know, we want a Jensen and a Misha panel and, they got that, you know, and like yeah. as opposed to like over in Jib where they get that all the time, and you don't get it over here. And seeing that was actually like it was it was I enjoyed seeing their camaraderie together on stage and seeing that discussion and seeing that ease and and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, the um the joke and the and all of that, it just it's mm, yeah. It's pandering to your community, right? It's pandering to your base and then not being respectful afterwards because of what happened too. Like there was no discussion, Mm -hmm. nothing stated about it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. (laughs) What did he do? (laughs) So then we get through. Was it Monday or Tuesday when he finally said something? Monday, I think. Okay. I feel like it was like late Monday though. It was late Monday. Mm-hmm. It was. Uh, oh no! It was Sunday night. My apologies. Okay. okay. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it was Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. Okay, yeah, it was Monday. Okay. It was Monday, and it was eleven p.m. UK time. So depending on where you are, so if you're on the East Coast, that's like in the 6 afternoon. PM. Yeah. Yeah. Late evening 6- or early evening. Yeah. Yeah. Early evening. If you're out on the West Coast, it's eight hours. So like three o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. right? Yeah. So in the afternoon. So this was not something he got up Monday morning and got right the fuck on. He left it. Didn't say a word. Now for me, if so because you know that I had to he you know, he knew what he said. It wasn't like anybody said it for him. It wasn't like everyone went, Haha, Misha's bye. And then nobody told Misha that that's what they said. It came out of his mouth. He knew he said it. Mm -hmm. If that was me, when I'm done with my concert for the night and I'm back to my hotel room, I'm I'm talking about it now. I'm addressing it now, right? Because they have their phones. It's not like they're on media blackout for the weekend. They know what's happening, but he didn't. Nothing on Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and then we're talking at the earliest Monday afternoon. Misha tweets. So he's let the fandom go fucking say all over the weekend and not said a goddamn thing. But we get to Monday. I have the tweets. Okay. There will be links in the descriptions to screenshots of these tweets, tweets we're going to talk about to come, and also a video of this moment from this dinner with Misha. It will all be in the description. Don't worry. I got the facts to back me up here, guys. So on Monday afternoon, Charitably, let's say it's Monday afternoon. Let's say he flew out. He's dealt with it as soon as he landed because he lives on the West Coast, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's always in, in Seattle and it's that way, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know. I know America. <laughs> Shut up, guys. <laughs> yeah, good. I know. <laughs> I didn't even know you had four fucking time zones. I don't know anything, but I, I know. I know Seattle's on the West Coast. So Misha tweets. I'll read it out for you. I want to deeply apologize for misspeaking this weekend. At a fan convention in New Jersey, when I was talking with the audience, I said that I was all three things, an introvert, an extrovert, and a bisexual. My clumsy intention was to wave off actually discussing my sexuality, but I badly fumbled that, and I understand that was seen as me coming out as bisexual. You were trying to wave it off? You were, what? You were trying to wave it off? Really, Misha? You were trying to wave it off? I don't know. Stop that. And I have no sympathy for that because he asked that question in the first place. Mm -hmm. If he'd have been with somebody else, somebody else would have asked that question and then they'd have gone, hey, Misha, what about you? And he'd gone, ah, fuck all of them, right? Mm -hmm. 
that's okay. But he asked that question. He put himself in that position and I'm not going to give him sympathy for fumbling, trying to dig himself out of it. This was not my intention, so I need to correct the be- the record. I am not bisexual. I happen to be straight. What? I, there's something about that that own it. There's nothing wrong with being straight. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Like you know, oh, I happen to be a Gemini or whatever. It's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody nobody's coming after you, cis hat white man. Nobody's coming after you. And I know that being white is irrelevant in this particular instance, but like, it's the, just, you know, the, the endless victim complex of mm-hmm. a lot of cis hat white men. Not all of them, not all men, but a lot of them. I happen to be straight, but I am also a fierce ally. And the last thing I want to do is falsely co op the struggles of the LGBTQIA plus community. I believe and fully support that we need to sanctify the human rights to express our identities honestly and be free to love whomever we choose openly. I am deeply sorry for the clumsiness of my language. I want to be a better ally and I feel sick to my stomach that I might have done anything to make things worse. I'm trying to learn, trying to do better, and I will keep listening. Thanks and I'm sorry, Misha. Just hold that last bit in your head, guys. He's going to keep listening. Okay. He's going to keep listening. He's sick to his stomach. That's why you waited three days to say anything about it. He feels dreadful. He feels awful. He would did not intend to co-opt our struggles. He feels awful. That's why he had a fucking cracking time with his mates all weekend and dealt with it afterwards. Again, if this was me, he said it. It wasn't like anybody said it for him. It was him. Deal with that on Friday night. Mm-hmm. Deal with it when you go back to your hotel room. You're going to shower, even if you're going out with Jared and Jensen, or if, if you're going out with your friends, you're going to go back and shower and change. You've been like sweating in a convention hall all day, surely. You're going to go deal with it then. Tweet that then. You don't need three fucking days to think of a way to say, I misspoke, I'm sorry. And I probably wouldn't be, I might be as angry. I don't know. But if he had addressed it right off the bat, then that I would I would feel a little bit better because then he would have been like, oh God, I fucked that up and dealt with it. But he uh-huh. didn't. Just left it out there. And I, like, I'm assuming if you're listening to a podcast about Supernatural, you're at least half aware of what's going on in the fandom. It fucking went mental. Everybody went crazy. Because that's a big fucking deal. Mm-hmm. You know, <clears throat> whatever you kind of, Anything that you're interested in, if someone, if you can identify with someone, that's a big fucking deal. Yeah. It was a big deal to me when I kind of twigged into like a lot of the stuff that Sam feels throughout the show. I feel we don't exactly have the same lived experience. I mean, he's a fictional character, but that's beside the point. We don't Mm -hmm. necessarily have the same lived experience, but a lot of the things that he feels and deals with I feel and deal with and I Mm. identify with that and it's incredibly validating to feel like you're not alone and in much the same way as Jared coming out about his depression and a whole heap of people were like oh my god I feel that way and it's just nice to feel like you're not alone so I don't blame the community one fucking second for going after and being really hyped about this i don't yeah but my lived experience is the reason that i don't look for representation in this way because i don't expect it because i know straight people think i don't exist queer people think i don't exist i don't i don't have a space in either of these places so I damn sure don't expect to be represented, certainly not in mainstream media like this. That's just my lived experience. Very cynical. If I'm represented, oh, that's fucking marvellous. Mm-hmm. But if I'm not, I mean, I'm not happy about it, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. So this is, this, is Misha's, this is Misha's apology. I'm not happy about it. Mm-mm. I'm not happy about it. Mm-mm. And the, the fallout from this is 
most of the straight fans when it's okay, Misha, we all make mistakes. And most of the community, the LGBTQ plus queer community went, it's okay, Misha, we all make mistakes. And right in the middle, where we always seem to be, was the tick tiny voice of the bisexual community going, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. No! No! Absolutely not. We are furious about this. We are not the butt of the joke. This was bang out of order. Nobody listened. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave a fuck. We were attacked from both sides. He misspoke. It's a mistake. People are allowed to make mistakes. And we're like, yeah, they are, but we're sick of being the butt of the fucking joke. If he wasn't joking about us in the first place, this wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. None of it. He put himself in this hole and tweet something three days later and everyone go, ah, oh, it's all right, mate. We all make mistakes. Yeah, we do, but not like that. I have never inadvertently come out to someone I did not intend to come out to because I don't make jokes about people's sexuality. I make jokes about my own, but that's because it's mine. I, I made it. It's mine. I can do what I want with it. It's mine. But I don't make jokes about other people's sexuality. If people come out to me in any capacity, I'm respectful of that. I, you know, I take that in and I do whatever brains do to make a mental picture of someone. And I'm like, I'm going to just add this in there as well. And it just becomes part of how I view you. Mm -hmm. And I would never make a joke about that. I would never purposefully be disrespectful. But nobody listened. Mm -hmm. Nobody listened. Everyone went, oh, Misha, it's fine. Don't worry about it. We know you're an ally. You played that gay angel that one time. Fuck. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And all the bi people just went, all right, fine. And I'm sure that Misha lost a substantial amount of followers and whatever, but it was never addressed again. Mm -hmm. It was never, it was never brought back up. Nobody ever said anything about it. Misha just went on his merry fucking way, opening his bastard mouth about things. So that was Bygate. That happened back in April. I discussed this at length with Sandra, but I was like, after we discussed it at length, I was like, I'm not going to say anything. We don't need to do anything with this. You know? Because we're here. We're here for Supernatural, the show. We're here for the, the fanfic. But we keep an eye on the fandom. We're in the fandom. We usually know what's going on. Not all the time. Yeah. I've muted quite a lot of words. You might get a general idea of what's going on. So, you know, we were aware of it. We tossed it up. Do we want to do we want to address this? Sandra was very respectful and was like, "Do you, the mm -hmm. queer person, want to address this?" And I was like, "No, it's fine. It's a mistake. I don't genuinely believe Misha is homophobic. It's a mistake, and I'm angry about it. But it come from a place of ignorance, I think, not a place of malice. It was kind of like a strike one. Right. Yeah. Like that's kind of like what it was like. Okay. Well, let's see if he's learned kind of mm -hmm. a scenario. Um, I think it gets into understanding what your power is in a fandom. Um, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but Supernatural is a very interesting fandom and the relationship that the actors the characters have with the fandom i think mm -hmm. is very unique and sometimes can be one of the best things in the world and sometimes can be one of the worst things in the world when you really look at it as a as its own um like bio <laughs> environment or whatever like how things grow yeah. and, and and stuff together yeah, yeah, a little, yeah. like a little a little microcosm yeah yeah and we get yeah. to look at it and go, oh, all right, okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think strike one, strike one's probably a good way to put that. Now, I shared my notes with Sandra um, before we started this, mostly because I wanted to, her to be aware of what I was going to talk about and if there was anything she specifically wanted me to veto and not discuss. So you left a comment about bi people still being okay to joke about. Mm -hmm. Have I addressed everything? All your questions? Do you have um... any more? Yeah, maybe basically just the the 
the experience I've seen right from on the outside looking in and again, like knowing, knowing, knowing some people who are um, gay and definitely hearing that uh, a lot of what you already discussed about, like, you know, well, why people just haven't made up their mind yet, or, you know, they're on the fence or, you know, it's, it's almost like it's ingrained in our brain that there has to be a yes or no. Like you said, it has to be binary. And I think it's even gets drilled down into people in a community who are already being marginalized, who are already experiencing prejudice, but for some reason can't turn the mirror on themselves and see that they are doing the same thing to people in their community. Whether it's exactly the same, it's still a part of your community. Why would you marginalize another part of your community when you know what that feels like? So that's just my I've had conversations with um, people that I know in that scenario. It's like, why would you do that to somebody when you know how that feels? <laughs> it just doesn't make, just doesn't make sense to me. You know, it's that's that's human nature, though, isn't it? Yeah, but everybody I, again. When do we start to learn that yeah. it's really not human nature? Like it's it's a it's a you're you're brought up in that, but it's you a learned can behavior. learn and grow and move past that. It's not saying you have to know right out the gate as soon as you pop out but you know when we're talking decades of it i i feel that my generation okay because i'm i'm probably a couple generations past you know beyond you carly so to me it's like we still don't have our shit together um and i think that younger generations growing up at least are going to have a very more open idea to sexuality in general and gender identity and all of those things but we're still exposed to it. We need to learn. We don't, we're not always going to get it right. But don't intentionally continue to have this bias. When you are also being um, hurt by that bias, too. Like, I just think you got to learn to not continue to beat other people up with the stuff. that Like, don't pick up the same stick um, mm-hmm. that, you're, that you've been beat up with and hit somebody else and beat them down. Um, well, there are gay conservative Republicans I know. who support Trump. But that's what so... I mean. And a lot of it is, I just don't understand. You know, I just don't yeah. understand that. So I I just know that's always been a thing I've kind of tried to. And yeah, even like um, from what I've seen, gay, gay men, lesbian women. Like there seems to be like this, like, you know, I've heard things and i've like i'm just like, what is going on like you guys like it's just like come on like don't beat yourselves up like you're gonna have plenty of stuff from the outside doing that for you don't do that to mm. yourselves that kind of thing that i just don't i just don't get and um when i have conversations with people i'm questioning that um hoping that maybe it maybe gets them to think a little bit about why because again is that because of your own inherent issues with yourself as a person you know that you're still working through stuff so you have to be mad at something or you have to have an opinion about something mm-hmm. yeah yeah that was all but no i think you addressed it i think you addressed okay it. okay yeah. good i will i will say i know i know from um sort of the the queer community's perspective there was a lot of hate. I mean, there still is quite a lot of hate directed towards by men. Um, and I'm not I'm not saying that that by women don't don't get the same kind of thing, but by men do experience a lot of discrimination. Like uh, there's been quite a few like polls and things like that where um to, you know, cishet women or whatever say they wouldn't sleep with a man who's ever slept with another man. Hmm. things like that Mm -hmm. and i believe it it kind of shakes out on the same way gay men wouldn't sleep with a man who'd slept with a woman Hmm. um you know bisexual i mean bisexual and gay men but we're just obviously just talking about bisexual men here um they're still sort of discriminated against in terms of not being able to give blood Mm -hmm. and things like that and that you know that that goes across with with gay men as well but Mm -hmm. still Mm -hmm. There's no hierarchy of discrimination, mm-hmm. but bisexual men do tend to get 
the short end of the stick a lot of times. Mm. And I do know that from the community, like before and around like the Stonewall riots and things like that, when, you know, being gay was a, a really big issue, um, there were men who would say that they were bi to try and hide, you know, so they're not they're not gonna get found out. And it was looked on as quite cowardly by the community. Mm. and trying you know trying to hide and you should you should stand up for what you believe in and you should you know stand up and be counted really put your voice to it and you're you're a coward for for saying that you're bi even even when you're completely completely homosexual um and again that's that's all kind of like anecdotal Mm -hmm. um it's not something i've 100 looked into but i do know that that attitude especially in the older generation Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's still quite common. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it is. It's human nature to learn behavior. Everybody punches down to make themselves feel better. Yeah. You know, you see it. Everybody talks about racism between um, black and white people, which is utterly derivative. But, you know, that's that seems to be the face of racism. But if you look, Europe is predominantly white but there's a whole heap of racism between the races that all share a similar skin tone again if you go to asia Mm -hmm. very much see the same thing Mm -hmm. similar cultures they're not the same i would never say that but similar kind of cultures and every one of them thinks that their culture is the best and they are racist and discriminatory towards other cultures i mean i can say as an italian right like and this is like a thing that you know we just i know i do i joke about it but like sicilian is very different (laughs) from an italian you know it's just like but but it's so it's like it's that kind of um i can understand it at that level but again like not like in a in a hatred like i thought i still get like don't be so insistent that you know because it's different from you that it's, it's wrong. It's wrong, you know? Yeah. So I Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it is, it is what it is. And mm-hmm. with so many things, I certainly look to the youth, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I've lived my experience and I think if I can show my sons the ways not to be, mm-hmm. that they will go forward and do better. Yeah than we did yeah you know i'm a a millennial we tried our fucking best we got sold a whole heap of lies and we tried our best Mm -hmm. but we've made the way for the next generations to come and really fix some shit Mm -hmm. you know and that's not to say that we stop trying but you have to look to the youth because it will be them Mm -hmm. that comes along and fixes yeah or dismantles whatever needs doing yeah but that was so that was strike one and then strike two happened and that was when i was like sandra we need to talk about misha <laughs> so mm. strike two happened um not too long after the pub q shooting in colorado springs which happened in the evening the late night slash early morning of November the 19th and November the 20th of 2022. So just about a month ago. So if you haven't heard, if you don't know, we'll briefly go through what happened at Club Q. I will say right now, I will not be naming the murderer, nor will I be naming his father, who is relevant to this. Um, They are not names that deserve to be remembered. They should not be publicized anywhere. He is a murderer. His dad is somewhat complicit in that. And I won't I won't be talking about them because they don't matter. The victims matter. So fuck you. It's an LGBTQ plus nightclub, Colorado Springs, Colorado. And this idiot goes in and just opens fire. Um, do we know what he Oh, with a, with an with an AR fifteen. Oh, it's always an yeah. AR fifteen, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's always an AR fifteen. Mm-hmm. So he walks to this gay club, this um, you know, gay nightclub, with his AR fifteen style rifle. 
today's Wikipedia. I don't know what the difference is, but it's always a fucking AR-15, isn't it? Multiple um, magazines of ammunition, and he's wearing body armor, and he just opens fire. Um, employees, patrons, just everything, right? He kills five people, and he injures 26, including himself. So we'll say 25, because fuck him, he doesn't count. Mm-hmm. He kills five, injures 25 others, 19 of them by gunfire, and I'm assuming the others were, you know, maybe as a result of a crush or any falling debris, anything like that. It doesn't, it doesn't say. So the victims were, because their names are important, we have Ashley, uh, how it's would you pronounce that, Sandra? Pa. Pa. P-A-U-G-H. So we'll go with Pa. Um, and she used she, her pronouns. We have Daniel Aston, he, him. Derek Rump, he, him. Raymond Green Vance, he, him. And Kelly Loving, she, her. Now, two of those five victims were trans, a trans man and a trans woman. It is utterly irrelevant which of the victims were or were not trans. Just It's just for worth knowing. Two of them were. It does not make the um, attack any worse or better. Um, but they are the people that passed away. And of course, it was horrendous. It was horrendous. A lot of, especially American people in the LGBTQ plus community remember Pulse, the nightclub in Florida that was shot up in, I believe it was 2016. Um, you know, but it, it brought back a lot of memories for them. And of course, you know, there's the people that were there, the people that were injured, the families, you know, even if you're not injured in a gun attack, I cannot imagine how terrifying it must be to be in that space when that is happening and genuinely fear for your life. Mm-hmm. Guns are not a thing that are, they, they're not a thing in the UK. Very, very few people have guns to the point where seeing armed police officers, because our regular our regular police officers are not armed. So if there's ever an occasion where I have to encounter or interact with armed police officers, it makes me very uncomfortable mm-hmm. because I'm just like, I just don't think guns should be a thing that are. I don't think that they're necessary. Mm-hmm. And I mean, come at me in the comments. I don't think that there is. We defend our homes in the UK pretty fucking well without guns. You know, it's all right. We got bats and stuff. You can, you, you, I just, nobody needs that kind of firepower outside of an active combat zone, in my opinion. So it's going round. And then someone finds out who the shooter's dad is, and we go and have a conversation with them. And the shooter's father is where Misha comes in. But, it's just we honor the we honor the victims and we remember their names because they're the important ones, not this fuckwit. Who I, I may just nickname him that to be fair. But anyway, we go and we speak to Fuckwit's dad, who is everything you would think Fuckwit's dad is. And he basically there's a video that goes around of him. I haven't watched it. I will not watch it. If you have seen it, feel free to correct me if I get anything wrong. But the general gist of it is him going, oh, when I heard it was a gay club, I was really worried because I thought he was gay. Oh, that was your concern, was it? Not that your son has murdered five people and injured a further 25. No, you were worried that he was in a gay club because he was gay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Father of the fucking year right there, pal. Um, And he's, you know, expresses his relief at finding out that his son was not gay. Um, and in this in this particular interview, he tells the journalist that he he was the one that taught his son to be violent from a very young age. Um, you know, would praise him for getting into fights and things, telling him that violence worked, which is oh, that's a whole nother problem, isn't it, guys? That's a whole nother problem. Um, he, the fuckwit's dad, identifies as Mormon. Well, no, identifies as a conservative Republican and says that his family is Mormon. I don't think you can identify as a religion. Maybe you can, I don't know. Um, But 
he's a conservative Republican. His family's Mormon. They don't have any truck with those fucking queers. He doesn't say that, but it's implied, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't, they don't do, they, we don't do gay is his exact quote. Mm-hmm. But he adds that although he held anti-gay views, that that was no excuse for shooting people in a club. And he did, he offered his condolences to the families of the victims and things like that, which is, the quote from him is, I'm so sorry, guys, for your loss. With no regard to politics, it's human life. I'm so sorry, my soul goes out to you. Which is kind of disingenuous. I feel like if your main concern upon hearing that your son was in a gay bar was that he was gay and not, oh my God, he's killing people. Um, we don't want your fucking apologies. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. You know, your apologies don't mean dick. You did this. You raised this boy like this. And I don't want your fucking apologies. Now your son has done exactly what you fucking raised him to do and is a murderer. Mm-hmm. This has been part two of our three-part Misha episode. If you want to reach out to us, you can email us at idlinginthimpala at gmail.com or reach out to us on Twitter at idling in the letter D Impala. You can find links to our personal socials and our AO3 accounts in the description. There's a link to my author website and original fiction. Also in the description will be links to our Ko-fi page if you feel able to give a little donation as well as a link to our merch store. So with that, we'll say thanks for joining us in the back seat and we'll see you next time.